Welcome to Viewpoint, the public affairs show with an attitude. I'm your host, Joe Valeno. Uh, here we are in the middle of summer. It's a surprisingly cool day. The last time uh, we visited you it was in the middle of that heat wave. But uh, the good weather doesn't deter us from having to uh, still address some real problems in our society. And with us today is a man who for many years has been at the forefront of environmental issues here in Rhode Island, Mr. Abel Collins, who is the program manager for the Sierra Club of Rhode Island. Abel, welcome to Viewpoint again, I should say, because you were a candidate for Congress a few years ago, and we had you on the show as a, well, as a guest for, then. Thanks for having me back, Joe. Well, it's a pleasure. pleasure to have you back. The Sierra Club of America, some of you may know, is probably the oldest, am I correct, the oldest environmentally active or conscious organization in America with how many members did you say over? Uh, 1.3 million. Yeah. Wow, well, 1.3. started way back in the latter part of the 19th century, right? Yeah, 1892, so 121 years ago now. So with, with the mission of generally to preserve our planet, <laughs> say that, to save our planet. Yep, um, explore, enjoy, and protect the planet. That's our mission I like statement. that, explore, enjoy, and protect the planet. That's great, it's terrific. Anybody can agree now, with recently that. Now <laughs> recently I read a good article just last week in the Providence Phoenix about Bra the Brayton Point power plant over there in Somerset, Mass, uh, almost in Fall River, mm -hmm. about a protest from people who were protesting the fact that the Brayton Point power plant, which provides electrical energy to the Fall River, greater Fall River area, burns coal to produce, the, the, I guess, steam to turn the, the turbines that produce the electricity. I didn't know that, frankly. Like a lot of us, we just assume that they burn natural gas because here in Rhode Island, when Narragansett Electric Company mm -hmm. built re, what they call the repowering project, three new, uh, you can see those three new stacks over there that, right. that, that give off the effluence from uh, natural gas, which is a cleaner, much cleaner fuel. Uh, we always assume that so was Braden Point, but that's not the case. They burn coal. So they, what, how long have they always been burning coal over there? They've, yeah, they've been burning coal since they started. It's a, it's a huge plant, too. It's yeah. not just any coal plant. It's the biggest uh, power plant north of Maryland. It's and bigger than what we have here in, in Providence. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah it's significantly larger. It, produces, or it can produce as much as 1,500 megawatts of, of energy, wow. I believe. And uh, so that makes it truly a, a, a very large power plant. And, you know, coal is the main fuel that they burn. They do have some capacity for natural gas, but it's really mainly a coal plant. Coal is a, is a big problem because it's the dirtiest of the fossil fuels. Do they bring fuels. in coal by train? It must be, is there a track? Uh, they bring there it in by are train. trains, but they also bring it in by barge. By barge. Um, yeah. There was also a, up before, to Mount Hope Bay and the Taunton River. Yeah, that's Taunton right. Taunton River. Um, before this big protest, um, you know, the week before last, there was a, a very small protest. You know, a lobster boat went to try and block a, a barge that was coming right. in to, with a load of coal. Um, which got some good press as well. But you know, uh, Sierra Club, other environmental organizations are concerned because coal is, is so much dirtier than it's natural gas. It's certainly a gas. dirty fossil fuel. <laughs> it's yes. very dirty. You know, and it's not just the, the carbon emissions, which are you know huge problem for global warming, but uh, you know, mercury, arsenic, all types of toxins come out of uh, power plants when they're, when they're burning it. That's why you see increased incidences of, of cancer, uh, you know, cardiovascular diseases close to power plants and even far downwind of power plants. Is there any lead content in, in coal? Uh, it, there is some, but it's not as significant as the mercury, which is the, the, mercury the biggest. Mercury is the biggest one. And it's in the atmosphere. It, yep. It and it settles down, down onto the ground and onto the bay. And they're right at, right at, they're right on Mount Hope Bay. Mm -hmm. So is, is Brayton Point the only uh, plant around New England that's still burning coal, or are there others? Some are, were? Th there are still some out there. There's a plant uh, out in Western Mass, Mount Tom, I think, is the area where that is. There's, uh, oh, that would be near Holyoke, that way, yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, in, in Connecticut, uh, Bridgeport has a big right. coal plant. Right. Uh, there was a, a, a couple of plants in eastern Connecticut, I think, so that were actually closed down. So your counterparts in the Sierra Club and those other areas, they're active That's in, right. uh, in trying to stop, I guess, stop and eliminate this coal burning thing. 40, 40, 40 how many people were arrested over 40? 40, 40? 45, yep. And, and what happened? There was a hearing yesterday or something? 
Yeah, so uh, it was the Sunday before last, July 28th. They all got arrested. They got out on bail that very same day. You know, some of them got uh, let out. It took about eight hours or so. Uh, they had to pay a $40 fine. And then they were actually yesterday. held for eight hours. That's, that's unusual. They're only, it's not that big a group. No, you know, you, you wouldn't think that that was necessary, but I think they probably wanted to discourage It's probably the biggest people. event the Somerset police have had in 100 years. I, they, probably they probably had to call in all their reserves. I think they, <laughs> they called in people from all over the place. You know, it was a very dangerous crowd there. Oh, yeah, very uh, dangerous crowd. <laughs> I saw it on television. Television gave it a very good coverage. A lot of older folks didn't look like they're going to hurt a fly, but they just were out there no. with their body as a witness protesting the use of uh, the, the call. The, so, old, the oldest person who got arrested uh, is an 86 year old, uh, blanking on his name, Fred from Middletown. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was an eclectic group that got arrested, but you're right, a lot of, a lot of retired people who are worried about their grandchildren. What are some possible next steps? What will, what will be done next, especially what will the Sierra Club be doing? You are obviously, well, did the Sierra Club sponsor the protest, or you just some we, friends we, of the club joined in? But. Fr friends of the club joined in. We, we actually were sort of prevented from sponsoring it because it did involve uh, civil disobedience. The club uh, tries to do everything within That's true. You're a non lawful yeah, means. Yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, you have to follow the law all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, there was one exception made by the National Sierra Club just earlier this year. You know, a, a bunch of uh, our executive director got arrested right what outside was that the White House. Was it for a fossil? Fossil fuel issue? Yeah, you know, we're trying to w stop the Keystone XL pipeline. Oh, yes, right, um, Keystone, that's the big one, yeah. That's, that's another big issue for yeah. us. Uh, so that, that caused us to, to, to make that exception, and in the future, the club will probably do civil disobedience actions, but on a very, you know, special, specialized basis. I'm very concerned about that Keystone project. I think that pipeline has to go a long way, from Canada to Texas, and there's a lot of, points along the way where you could have a spillage. The, the, it's, it's a very uh, disturbing project. You know, the, I mean, we're, if we're going to get into tar sands talk, then we can That's do a whole show thing. on that. But that is stuff is very corrosive. They have to heat it uh, up a lot to get it to actually flow through the pipeline. Oh, yeah, because it's um, heavy, heavy, thick sludge. And, uh, so, so it has to be kept at a certain temperature. All right, let's stick with Braden Point for a minute. Right. Yeah. What, what is this group likely to do now? That they, by the way, at the hearing, they were, what happened? They were all dismissed? All right. Yeah, all the charges were dismissed, so 45 people, they were, oh, you know, I don't think anything goes on the record or anything like so that. So. The, the, well, I, I have to assume, I'm just guessing, but it's a safe guess, that the Braden Point power plant chose not to charge these people with uh, trespass just I, I think cost of I think doing that's, business. I think that's a safe assumption. I but I you know I don't know those back details at this point, and I'll let you know as soon as I know for sure. Cost of doing business. Every once in a while we have to have a protest. And <laughs> some of them probably their yeah. customers anyway who are using. Yeah. I'm I'm sure you know, you know people in Massachusetts are getting that energy. It was mostly a Massachusetts crowd, yeah. so they are. Do they, pro do they provide uh, electrical? Uh, Service to New Bedford? Is that, does that go as far as New Bedford? The, well, oh, the grid, yeah, it's all yeah. part of the big yeah, grid. Yeah, the grid is, is a very large, sort of amorphous thing. So, so by comparison, we're more fortunate here in Rhode Island that National Grid burns natural gas. But we, we are. We, you know, I, Rhode Island has some of the cleanest energy, I think, in, in the country. Um, and some and, of the most expensive energy in the country, too, because New England has expensive New energy. England is expensive. We're actually sort of cheap compared to the rest of New England. Um, but I think that also has oh, to do Maine, with the natural Maine probably gas. has. Tremendous. Maine is the lowest, and then us. As I used ones. to do some work up in Maine when I was a consultant for, the, for HUD and uh, in Portland, and I was up there a number of times during the big protest against the proposal to build an oil refinery in Machias Port, Maine. Mm -hmm. That was shot down. A lot of money was raised to defeat that refinery. The irony is that the money was mostly raised from people who have vacation homes in Maine who are not Maine residents. Yeah. Maine is a poor state. Maine needed jobs. That's right. So a lot of people wanted that plant because there would be jobs for Maine residents. But the vacation money prevailed, and they defeated it. Well, but, you know, Somerset has some similarities there. Uh, you know, I think a lot of there's a, Somerset's a pretty small community, yeah, so yeah. 
I think the plant yeah, employs. It's just on the edge of Fall River, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so they employ about 200 people, uh, work for the plant, and then another 200 oh, I'm sure a lot contractors. of them are locals. They're just locals. Right, yeah. and, yeah. Uh, you know, they're scared of the plant closing. So one of the demands of the protesters was that there be a Well, of course, the alternative doesn't have to be that the plant has to close. They could, they could convert to... Convert to natural gas like Narragansett did, which is now a national grid, but I mean, it's expensive, but it can be done. We know right. it can be done, I mean, it's the thing. And, you know, I, I think what the people who are protesting there want, they want renewable energy in its place, and I think that's conceivable, you know, I which think. Now, which, which will bring us to windmills then, if we want renewable sure, energy, sure. bring us to windmills. Fall River is on the Taunton River, which is really at the <clears throat> the top of what we call Mount Hope Bay, which is part of the larger Narragansett Bay system. And uh, in Rhode Island, I know you've been involved and have gone publicly uh, on, on, on spoken out about the deep water wind project, which mm -hmm. would be to build what, eight, eight windmills or 12 uh, on the it, other side of Block Island? It, it originally, the plan was for eight. It's gone down to five because five, they've yeah. increased the size of the turbines. Okay. So. Uh, basically, they're looking at a 30 megawatt uh, installation. Originally, it was going to take eight turbines, but the technology has been growing so quickly in the wind field that now they can do the same thing with five turbines. So it's oh, so, so they only build five, but they, they can generate more capacity of kilowatts. Yeah. Now, some weeks ago, you wrote a letter to the editor in Providence Journal supporting the Deep Wind Project, mm -hmm. which uh, I can understand why you, and so do I, want to see the development of wind energy because it's clean and renewable. And, uh, but of course, there are a lot of environmentalists who are concerned, especially people in the fishing industry. So sure. first of all, explain to us why you support the deep water wind project. You know, I think any, you have to realize every, anything we do is going to have impacts. Well, some trade-offs, right. right. So the question is, the energy that we're going to be generating from this uh, deep water demonstration project and hopefully the, the larger one to follow, is the energy that we're replacing doing more harm the way we're generating it right now than the way we would yeah. when we're generating it through wind? And I think really that, that pro-con analysis is pretty easy to make. You know, the wind is, is much better for the environment. They've done extensive environmental it's, studies. It's, it's free, too. <laughs> right, and in the end, it, it keeps generating. Well, we may not be free. We will have to pay for our electricity, but the wind itself is free. That's right. There's no, there's no, there's no delivery charge, as they right. say. <laughs> People aren't going to be getting cancer or, you know, right. all, all the, the effects of burning coal or fossil fuels. We're not going to see the climate change, and that's right, the right. biggest concern for Rhode Islanders in particular because we have so much to lose with the rising oceans uh, and the warming, warming planet. So nationally, the Sierra Club supports naturally windmill, wind powered, wind yeah. powered energy. Yes, we're big supporters for renewable energy. And you know, you were asking about what's the follow-up action here at Brayton Point, and it's, you know, fits into this uh, topic because I think at the end of August into early September there's going to be a big march from the coal plant over to uh, Cape Cod, 70 mile march, um, you know, basically to the site of oh, where the Cape that wind. Next. Wow. Yep. So that'll, that should be a from, big event. From Brayton Point to Cape Cod. Yep. Wow. They'll, so, go, right through, they'll go right through Wareham. If they get to Wareham and a bit. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, what is the concern for deep wind has, has come from some environmental groups and the fishing industry.